Okay, and I just want to uh, introduce because it's often uh, not very uh, well uh, used uh, uh, the idea of uh, quantile regressions uh, and why uh, it, it actually can be used in many contexts, but why it's, it would be useful to, to use in, uh, in spatial distribution modeling, and that's related to the issue here of uh, realized and, uh, and fundamental uh, niches. So you've heard about uh, Liebig uh, yesterday, and uh, the Liebig law of the minimum uh, plant production is limited by the first limiting nutrient, law, or it's also called the law of limiting factors. And often, uh, if you Google it, you find this uh, barrel uh, analogy uh, or metaphor, and uh, each of the planks on the barrel is uh, is a nutrient, and uh, the one that is the lowest limits the whole production, and uh, the production is symbolized by the maximum level of water you, you get in in the barrel. Uh, what is uh, nice in this is that, uh, of course, to uh, to actually know. Uh, plant production, uh, or to project what uh, model, what plant production can be, uh, you could measure all the, all the different uh, nutrients, or all the different limiting factors. In fact, here it's, uh, it's lacking uh, light and water, for example, which are also important factors to consider. Uh, and if you have all of them, and you can uh, figure out which is the most limiting one, then you can uh, predict what's going to be the, the growth. But, uh, if you're in a, in a system, uh, not an experimental system, but in a real-world system, and you don't know what is the full list of these uh, limiting factors, and you can only measure one or few of them, uh, you can still say something about the system. And for example, here, it's very hard to read. Uh, I don't know that, you know, uh, that's, uh, let's say, zinc, for example, that's this one. Imagine you only you have only measured zinc. You cannot tell very much about what's going to happen for plant growth, but what you can tell is that plant growth is never going to exceed that level, the level set by zinc. So you can only uh, say something about the potential maximum growth rate, but not the expected growth rate. So in other words, uh, you can tell about what cannot happen, that is, that growth is going to go beyond that, but not really about what will happen, because what will happen is something between zero and uh, the maximum level set by it. And when we go out and we, uh, we make observations, uh, we're often facing that. Uh, I took the example for temperature and, uh, and the fish uh, density. If you believe that temperature is limiting fish density in some way, and uh, the only thing you measure is temperature and fish density, you might still think that there are many other factors that are interacting in the system. But actually, locally, uh, you don't observe fish because a predator has been there, a fisherman has been there, uh, the salinity is wrong, uh, and many other reasons. Okay? So doing this is a bit like only having information on one of these, uh, one of these planks forming the barrel. And what regression quantiles does is, rather than modeling it, the whole, uh, the, the mean uh, of the, the mean value, the expected value uh, in, in the regression, it's actually modeling specific quantiles. I'll explain to you how it works. But the nice thing is if you start looking at the upper quantiles, you become very much related to the limiting factor approach. That is that here, this red line here shows you what is the maximum response given a measured factor. So when your measured factor is low, for example, you can never have a, a high response. But when it's high, you can have a high response, you can have a low response, you can have any type of response between zero and the maximum. So it's a nice way to develop models when you know that your set of observation is incomplete. You only partially observe your system. And that is often the situation we're in in, in, in real life in real systems observation. Uh, and if you uh, can take, I, I can circulate that reference if you want, but there's a, there's a paper by Kalian Noon, which is called A Gentle Introduction to Quantile Regression for Ecologists, which I think is a good starting point uh, for looking at it. The rest of the papers by Kade are not so gentle for ecologists. <laughs> 
Uh, so the basic principles, uh, and I, I swear I would not put any formula, but I did. That was a mistake. But uh, anyway, so I'll try to explain this uh, in simple terms. Uh, when you do uh, a conventional uh, linear regression uh, with minimizing the sum of squares, uh, what you try to do is minimize the sum of squares between observations and mean uh, predict and predicted value. Uh, Usually there's a square here, so you minimize that quantity. In quantile regression, you don't minimize squares, you minimize differences, so there's no uh, power here. And you separate uh, the observations that are below the predictions from the observations that are above the prediction. And you have a little factor that is called tau, which is the quantile you're trying to model. So if I, talk, if I take tau equals 0.5, that means I'm modeling the median, I'm trying to get half the values above my regression line and half the values below my regression line. And then this part and this part have equal weight, and you try to minimize the difference between observations and predicted values for negative values. And the, the difference between uh, observation and uh, predicted values for positive uh, values. If you change this value of tau, you give more weight or less weight to the values that are above or below the line. And tau is actually the quantile you are trying to model. So if you set tau to 0.1, you're modeling the 10% quantile. I think this is the one that is here. Okay. So in this cloud of point, uh, with a tau value of 0.1, you will obtain that line. That tells you that 10% of the data is below the line and 90% is above. Okay. In the case of limiting factor, we usually do the reverse. We try to model the upper line we have 90% or 95% of the values below the line and 10%, 5% above the line. So we're trying to model the envelope of, uh, of the distribution. And something that is commonly done, but I won't explain too much on this, is to actually show the slope of this regression line varying as a function of the quantile you are working on from 0 to 1. Uh, what is not shown here is the uncertainty along these estimates of slope. And that's one difficulty with uh, quantile regression, is that when you're trying to model what's happening at the edge, you have very little information, so you have a lot of uncertainty there. So when you want to make quantile regression models, you often need a lot of observations. Okay. But so the, the nice thing about this is uh, it's possible to use this regression system to model uh, environment abundance relationships in situations where not all the controlling factors are known or measured, which I think is the most common situation we're in. But what these models provide, they don't provide predictions or projections of the uh, uh, expected spatial distributions, but they provide a uh, prediction of potential distribution, potential habitat, or potential distribution pattern, so the maximum uh, distribution pattern you can observe. Okay, and the tools you have for doing this, uh, so I mentioned this paper earlier on, uh, that describes the methods uh, in gentle terms. Uh, there's a nice uh, paper that was the first attempt, to my knowledge, to, to do that, uh, to do uh, species distribution models using uh, regression quantiles. Although they did that with very simple models, uh, linear regression models, I think, in this paper. Uh, but now there's a package that's been uh, available for a number of years, but it's been updated very recently. Last update is 1st of March. And it has a lot of functions to uh, perform uh, quantile regression. Uh, and this package is developed by uh, Roger Conker, who is uh, also uh, the author of uh, many publications, but a good reference book. On, uh, on quantile regressions, uh, which is definitely not gentle for ecologists this week. Okay? <laughs> but at least you can have, a, you can have the, the good descriptions of the statistics uh, behind it. And in the, uh, in the example uh, files uh, I have, uh, you can try to, uh, to do uh, uh, quantile regressions. And this is, here is the example from the, the data you are, I've, I've just provided, uh, which shows I think it's the 90% 90, 90 uh, model uh, using uh, 
non-linear models. But you can see that you can, you can actually model the upper envelope of uh, the response of uh, abundance against temperature, depth, and, and chlorophyll. Uh, and these shapes are uh, quite different from what you would observe if you are trying to model the mean pattern. Okay.